I'm going to uh, talk to you about um, an area which uh, we see very often being neglected in customer experience, and that's the area of brand. And um, there's lots of reasons for that. We've all worked with models which are fix and build. And as a consequence of fixing, it tends to be led by operations people. It may be you've seen lean processing cars and all those sorts of models come in. And typically, if you try and get a brand person around that table, one, they don't want to be there. Um, and, and secondly, they're not necessarily welcome there. Sadly, that's uh, the shortfall of um, effective customer experience. And uh, this piece is about reminding us of how important brand is in that, but also asking, begging brand people to stand up for themselves and to get back to that table. So um, where it matters most to customers, do what we do best. Now, there's two ways of approaching that. You can either say, let's find out what matters most to customers and let's go around to those particular touch points or requirements and make what we do better than anyone else, or as the biggest brands will actually do, is to perhaps start with what we are great about and make customers value that, make sure those moments are actually baked into how we deliver it. So when our competitor comes along and says, we can do that, some smart person in that business says, yes, but we're never going to be able to deliver it in the way that they deliver it. And that's the, the thing about branded customer experiences. It can, it can live in any particular touch point of the organization. Um, that it should eke through the brand as well as the improvement it makes to customers. But this is the model we typ typically use, and it's a fairly straightforward one. It's not ownable by us, but we find it very easy and helpful for people to understand what they should be doing. And principally, um, I heard uh, Lucy and Camp say this, if you're building a chart, you should always make sure that things end up in the top right-hand corner. And, uh, and also, I'm an ex-planner, planners love triangles in things. So this one does both. It's got a triangle and I end up in the top right-hand corner, so it's good news. Um, but with customer experience, if you look and see how you're developing it for your organization, um, there are principally three levels. And, and you hear this a lot of the times. There's so many broken things going on in our business. They even talk to me about the other stuff. I've got to get that stuff fixed first of all. Those brilliant basics. Um, when you feel like you've got through there, and of course you never will, so that should never be just the strategy you follow, it's about making it better. Making it better than it was for customers before. And I think that's a problem we are very troubled with at the moment, is that digitalization is a sense things are in proving or being to be different, but it's about making it memorable, finding those defining expressions that really connect with what Tom was saying, so you can actually be remembered for your customer. So when they come to that decision making, they're actually thinking about your brand uh, without considering the others. Now there's two ways of doing that. You can just go up. And if you go up on the left, and we see an awful lot of organizations going up on the left here, you will do good things. You will fix the stuff that's broken. You will improve it, and then you will start to wow your customers. Um, Phil will come on to this, this later. This is about preservers, transformers, and vanguards. And actually, what you find is if you stick in the bottom left-hand corner, you won't get the return on investment on in what you're doing. And if you don't get the return on investment, you won't get the confidence of the board and you won't have a sustainable strategy. So you need to be thinking more on the right-hand side. So when you're doing the things that actually are just efficiency models, you're able to demonstrate the way we've done it means our competitors can't copy us. So brand differentiation um, and uh, brand experience, we, we term as brand experience platform. And it's something that's a very useful tool to actually try and connect up the different parts of the business uh, and bring brand more into the fray. And I would say, and I'm not saying this uh, glibly or to be, to be uh, dismissive of brand works, I think it's fabulous, but principally, these two things are enduring, your purpose and role in society and your brand positioning and values, which expresses how we do this better than anyone else. And typically what happens is the stuff gets thrown out and it comes down here and we have great marketing and great advertising going out. Uh, and everyone gets the slice of what the brand is and they run off and actually do it. Well, that's very difficult for any one of us sitting within an organization to work with. And what we actually need is much more guidance. We need to know if you are going to be expecting a brand to be delivered, how exactly do I do that? And we found a a couple of extra little layers have uh, just become very, very useful to include. Uh, and the first is a brand experience idea. So this is making it much more accessible to people who are using it. Um, it's aligned to the positioning, and it makes the positioning meaningful to all. So me and compliance, me sitting in product, me sitting in risk, me sitting in distribution, I get what that brand means to me 
and what I do and how I can add value to my, uh, to my customers. It's about bringing branded customer principles through. And the reason I went to Sarana Brandt yesterday is because a lot of financial services organizations, especially high net worth and uh, private banks, look to hotels as sort of the, the place to go, what we should be doing there. The thing that they have that we seem to have dropped or um, potentially um, forgotten the importance of is they have quality standards running through things. So when you go to the Dorchester, the Dorchester Hotel, the aesthetics and the experience are the same branded principles, the same quality standards. There's no difference between the two. And in financial services, what we <coughs> seem to have done is we've got an aesthetics in which we put the brand standards against, but we haven't applied the same logic to the experiences. And as a consequence, there's a disconnect. Now, as a consumer, I, I see that and I, I struggle with that because I do experience the difference between what I read and what I get which consistently explain what we do for our customers and how it makes them feel, it's all about output stuff as opposed to um, anything else, then gives this, this unifying approach across the organization to understand what we should do better. And what that then does is it comes through, not just through the comms and the advertising, but fundamentally it goes through absolutely every part of the organization. So the, the quality standards are then applied to absolutely every facet because it is multifaceted, as said earlier. Experience, you don't know when it's going to happen. You can't control it. And as a consequence of which, you've got to be on your A game if you're thinking you're going to lead with experience at all times.